No. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So I welcome everyone to, to this lecture. Uh, I see Nigeria lecture series. Uh, usually this lecture, the theme of our lectures are on mental health and psychology related from Islam perspective and uh, epistemology. So today's lecture will be uh, modeling the components of Ramadan for holistic eating by our Honorable Sheikh Ahmad uh, Al-Labib in Matola from Lagos. So a quick etiquette uh, for the Zoom. Let's keep our um, mic muted throughout the lecture. And there is no need for you to do the recording, no need for screenshots. So inshallah, we'll try to make the video available as soon as possible on our YouTube channel. So if you have a question, you wait, uh, you can put them in the chat box. If you wish to uh, raise up your hand and speak, so you wait for after the lecture, inshallah, we'll give you the audience to ask uh, your question directly from the from the share, from the lecture and share. So a quick uh, review about uh, I, uh, IC, International Center of Islamic Psychology. It's an inclusive space designed to connect people with the diverse backgrounds interested in Islamic psychology. Our aim is to disseminate knowledge, share resources, and discuss best practices in a free and accessible manner. It's, it's a platform that enables further development of people's personal and professional interest, studies and understanding of Islamic psychology within uh, communities and uh, other countries of origin. So for instance, currently, uh, this is a global uh, LMC international mission for IC, and Nigeria is uh, a national chapter. So we mirror, we are mirroring the mission of uh, IC International. So these are ways which you can participate or join. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel to see uh, uh, past lectures and events that are taking place. And to join ICIP Nigeria, I'll be sharing you the WhatsApp link. And also we have Islamic Psychology WhatsApp group. It's a resource sharing group for uh, all really anything related to, there are lots of resources you can find there and people are there just to share resources. So I will share one of the groups to us to, that we can join. The group is up to maybe about 20 or more than that. So I will share one of those groups uh, in the chat box, inshallah. So, and if you want to join ICIP, uh, which you have some advantage to that, you can have access to our digital library. So by just going to ICIP Foundation, you, have, you can navigate and see how you can uh, become a member, inshallah. So about our speaker for today, Sheikh Ahmad uh, Labib Imatola is the Mudir at Had al Bayt Foundation and at Pleasure Tree for Social and Humanitarian Services. He completed his Arabic and Islamic training at Mahadul Ridwan al Ilahi, Lagos State, Nigeria, where he currently teaches. Uh, he's also currently the postgra a postgraduate diploma student in Arabic and Sharia Sciences. He obtained his BSc. First in banking and finance at Lagos University, or job, and secondly, he, did, he also had a backed BSc in social work and administration, and then he continued to master's degree in sociology at University of Lagos. This profile uh, it's fascinating to me and also makes him more relevant to the, the topic at hand. I personally, uh, I knew him from far. Uh, personally, I admire him, and I personally facilitated to look for how to get in touch with him to, to talk about this topic. So I'm very confident, inshallah, that he is going to do justice to this topic and I pray a lot to assist him. Uh, I just want to give us a, a quick short announcement that in this Ramadan, we have a spiritual circle with one of our advisory board members, Dr. Mohamed Mugherdeen every Saturday and Sunday. So there will be an uh, interpretation of the Hikam of uh, the wisdom of Ibn al -Tayla. So uh, the details of this will be announced later on our WhatsApp group and uh, just stay tuned. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to hand over the debating to 
Sheikh Hamad. So I'll stop sharing. Um, if Sheikh wants me to share the slide, let me know if you are okay from your end. That would be better. So which one? You cannot mute your mic now. And I cannot hear. Oh, okay. So do you want me to share the, the slide or you can do that from here? Uh, let me let me try it from here. So okay. it will be, you know, more in sync with uh, yeah, yeah, me yeah. doing it from here. Okay, I just hope I don't uh, mess things up. It's really, I used to let people do it for me. I just wanted to say, okay, let me do it myself this time. I love it. <laughs> uh, uh, so while you're doing that, uh, uh, okay, to... let me just wait for you. Are you ready to share it now? I just want to play a, quick, a short uh, presentation slide. If you're ready, no problem. I'll just wait for you. Please, I think you will do well to help me with this. It's, to, I, I tried share, it earlier in the day, but I don't know why. Okay, there is a button on share screen, but uh, it's fine so that we will not waste time. I can just do that for you. Bismillah. Um, one moment, please. Let me open the slide first. Yes. Okay. One minute, please. Okay, I show it. Okay. You see, uh, first you need to open the file, then you go to, there's a share screen. So when you press on the share screen, it has to select the particular file you want to share. So you can try that. Okay, so I just opened the file. You know. So what I'm trying to do now is, uh, some minutes, please. Okay. Okay, I'm okay, just okay, so now let me share. So have I been able to share it now? Um, okay, it's coming up. I think so. Yes. Okay, so I think you need to put it on full screen, uh presentation mode. So that Yes, yeah, it's, it's coming up now. So I think if you go down, there is a button for, for that. So is it visible now? It's, vis it's visible, but you can put it on full screen, uh, presentation mode. If you, if you go down, there are two, like four buttons down there. The one on the, I think the one on the uh, far right, showing something like a presentation icon down. down. I think I have a problem with the screen here. Okay, okay. In any case, you can continue because it's it's okay. We can see it, so I think you just continue. Yeah, but we can see it. You get my point. We can see it, but not. It's not in presentation mode. Yeah, I need to. You know, I have practiced this in the morning so I don't get uh, we don't get things don't get moved okay. up at uh, Allah so let me just yeah, right. uh, yes uh, if you can see if you can see it uh, clean and clear you can see it, it uh, yeah it's clear yeah along the line I'll I'll still get my I'll see what I can do to rectify what is happening 
I seek refuge from Allah, from Shaitan, the accursed. And I start in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to commend the efforts of this organization, International Students of Islamic Psychology. Fortunately for me, I I wouldn't have believed, you know, if I had heard something like this is going on, but alhamdulillah, I used to be one of those that look forward to something like this. You coming up with international standard uh, group and uh, activities like this one. I have been, but I never knew something like that has even been, you know, in operation. So when I got contacted and I, you know, looked here and there for, I, I was impressed and I'm still impressed. And I say, for this wonderful uh, efforts, may Allah put you all up. Um, um, so without wasting much more time, because personally, I would be leaving very soon because of Tarawih and no. I have, <laughs> I am sure the responsibility to, you know, usher people in to no. Ramadan proper for tonight. So please, uh, I am sorry for the time wasted already and the time I chose. Allah alam. No. That's all I can no, say. Allah so directly yes. to straight to the topic of the day. But I still not even be here. I would love to make it, but I don't know how to do it because I myself it is disturbing me. <laughs> the fact that I am not on full screen is affecting me too. So just hold on a bit. Let me see what I can do. So if okay, in just moment, if I try it and I am not able to. Then I just leave it to further. Uh, that that is uh, it means that is how Allah Allah wants it to be tonight. Um, can you see this uh, something the road mentioned notes or comments? Can you read it down in your menu below? I notes, can comments. I can barely see anything. I can't. See ah, anything. okay, okay, I understand what's going on. Okay, um, also, the, because you are... the, the camera the. the it's I. It's just like a thumbnail. I'm seeing something like a yes, thumbnail. Yes. I can only see your face, so I oh, want to yeah. expand it so I can, you know, see everything and I can, you know, be in sync with you. Okay. So if so, you go to view, so thumbnail. If you go to view, you can see um, side by side. Then you can see a few of other people there, although. Uh, uh, camera is off for others. Okay, <laughs> just go ahead, Sheikh. <laughs> I, I, I didn't, okay, yeah, just go ahead. Sure. This way now. So, the topic is uh, modeling the components of Ramadan for holistic healing. To me, I, you know, if I put it in another way, it would look like, you know, the, the topic can be stated in another way saying exploring the impacts of the components of Ramadan on overall well-being. Ramadan and the components, the elements, those things that are central to Ramadan, like all, every other days, we have January, February, we have Muharram, we have Safar, we have, we have 12 months, 12 calendar months. Now, this month, they are not, they are months 
but there are some moons that are so peculiar, that are so special in the sight of Allah. And these moons, Allah has given us, given them to us, for us to be able to uh, do some things in that in those moons. Uh, before now, we might all be thinking Ramadan is the only month that has come with all these bounties. But there are two other months that precede Ramadan that also have their own bounties too. In Shaban, we have Nisful Shaban. In Rajab, we talk about uh, a special day in Rajab too. So, like we have Laylatul Qadr in, Laylatul Qadr in Ramadan, we also have some significant days, some significant nights in other months too. So, when I started, I said Ramadan is the name of the month that comes last in the sequence of the triad months that make up the annual period. Uh, okay, that make up the annual period of physical, mental, social, and spiritual recovery for a believer. You know, we have this month. We have other months. It's just a, it's just that Ramadan leads this month when it comes to the blessings, when it comes to the aura, the spiritual gift, the spiritual abundance it possesses. Other months too have their own spiritual uh, benefits too, but they all are junior, like let's say like a junior month so the month of Ramadan when it comes to the benefits of Ramadan. So Ramadan marks a period of serious process of contemplation. It is the month that we contemplate, we have time. We have the time to reflect, to think consciously or unconsciously of how we have spent the past 11 months. We think about it, sometimes it comes, this thinking comes through the sermon we listen to. Sometimes it comes through the Quran we are reciting. And sometimes it just comes through the hunger bite. Sometimes we get beaten by hunger and we feel the pang of hunger and it makes us reflect. It makes us think of a particular time in our life that out of no no choice out of our power. It, 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 was, it was difficult. It was out of our reach to get something to eat. So we get to be reminded. So we, it's a, it marks a period of serious process of contemplation, remembrance, self-reflection. There are some of these things that you have to do them deliberately. You have to deliberately do them. There are others that you will just be influenced by the fact that other people are doing it. You know, before Ramadan, People, some people will not take salat. Uh, you know, they will not be. They will not, they will not take it as important as they should take it. But because of Ramadan, they seem to, you know, turn a new leaf and then they make salat. Uh, they, 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 they stick to observing salat and then fasting and acts of charity. It is that part of charity that is so overwhelming for me. Everybody, even the, the one that is known to be very stingy, one that people used to say, ah, that man is an akagom, like we used to say here, it is in the month of Ramadan without anybody coercing him or her to do, they just imbibe the spirit, just, you know, enters them. The, the, the atmosphere it just makes them turn around and then they leave and then. Just like charity, people also, you know, divorce the vices they, they, they practice outside the moments of Ramadan. The bad deeds, the uh, rumor mongering, the backbiting, al to Wadnamima to, and all those bad attitudes, people just stay away from it without, without anybody holding the rod or the cane or the a bulala to go ask them, they just abstain from it. So it is, it is a month that everybody seems to be awake. So introduction proper, Ramadan is the name of the month that comes last in the sequence of the triad. So that's just what I think I just finished. So I'll go to the next slide now. So 
I would want you to pardon me for how the slides were, you know, structured and arranged. It was a, I had been on the road for, I just came back from Milan last yesterday. I had to start writing this thing yesterday and I gave it to somebody to do overnight. So it was sure. something we had to do uh, on the go. So pardon me yeah. for the, yeah. uh, the context arrangement. Is important. <laughs> I said, very, thank you very much. So that is relieving. Now, Ramadan is also can be seen as an annual spiritual conference, you know, like a workshop. This workshop is intentionally designed by Allah. And it is done for two main reasons. It is, it is done to train man, to train you and me, or in some cases, to retrain. You know, there is this thing we call training the trainers. So it is either to train or to retrain man. And what are these, what is the benefit of this, of this training or retraining? It is in order to maintain its connection. Some people are not aware that they have this connection with the divine, the supreme being. But in the month of Ramadan, they get, you know, they, 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 get, they, they get alerted. The awareness of the existence of the supreme being and the connection they have with him they get to see it then. And they get to see it through attending lectures. They get to see it through, whether they like it or not, listening to sermons. This is the period where, whether you like it or not, you cannot escape hearing the recitation of the Quran. You cannot escape listening to lectures. It is either at the front of your house or at your, at the back, back, or at your backyard or on your street or in the mosque around you, on the TV, on the social media. It is just a month that's designed by Allah. This is not a mistake. It is intentional. So it marks the period of a serious process of contemplation, like I said earlier. And it is also a second chance. You know, Allah gives us annually a chance for you and me to rewrite our history. Ramadan provides us an avenue to change our narratives, to change how we have been living our lives. And this thing, they happen, and when they happen, they affect us physically, they affect us mentally, psychologically, how much less spiritually. So in order to have a spiritually sound, physically healthy, and psychologically balanced life, Ramadan has come to give us that, that opportunity. So what is Ramadan? How is Ramadan? What is it something somebody somewhere or Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam just slept and woke up one day and said, let us, let us start doing, let us start, start practicing this, either for this reason or for that. No, it is enjoined by Allah. And that is why Allah says in uh, Quran, chapter 2, verse 183, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he says, I was Billahi in a shaytan or a gym, Smilla Rahman or Rahim, Ya Ayo Ledina Am and Ukutiba Ali Kumusiam, Kama Kutiba Allah Ledina Minkum Nikum, La Alakum Tatakun. Allah say, Oh, you who believe fasting is prescribed to you as it was prescribed to those before you, that ye may learn self restraint, that ye may be conscious of Allah, that ye may be conscious of yourself, because if you are not conscious of yourself, you will not be aware, you may not know where and how you have been severe in your relationship, your connection with your Rabbi. It is only when you are conscious of yourself, when you know that is why when the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was talking about people who would be questioned on their actions, he said, Rufi al-Kala, Rufi al-Kalam and Salasin, we will not write down the actions, the deeds, the words of three people. He, he mentioned Asobiyu, a child. He mentioned uh, Al, 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 Al somebody who is asleep. And then he mentioned somebody who is not conscious of his, him or herself. So those three people. So, so that you can be conscious of Allah through your own consciousness of yourself. 
So this is what Ramadan has come to. Nobody goes through Ramadan, Iman and Wahtisaban, with the faith in Allah that I am engaging in this activity. I am engaging in this month of Ramadan fasting. I'm doing observing fasting for Allah, Iman, and not because I want to lose weight. That is where we have to be very careful. When we treat tatakun, tatakun, some of us we know we have come to know to know the benefits, the, the physiological, the psychological, and the mental benefits of Ramadan. So we tend to forget about the primary reason we are engaging in the fasting of Ramadan. So we tend to forget it. So we are concerned about ah, I have jadi jadi. I, I am sure when the time of Ramadan comes, I will reduce intake my it intake of sugar. Ah, so you have mistakenly, unconsciously left what is found, what is the most important for what is not even important at all. Those ones should come as gains. Those ones should come as just nawafil benefits. They shouldn't be the main reason why. So la there is talking about you being deliberately conscious, you not being carried away by other, uh, you know, side attractions that you get in the month of Ramadan. So it is the month in which Al-Quran was also sent down. Allah says, Shah Ramadan, Allah the unzila fihi Al-Quran. Ramadan is the month in which Al-Quran was sent down Buddha and Lidnaz, as a guide to mankind and also clear signs, a guide to mankind, clear signs for guidance and judgment between right and wrong. So whoever of you cites the month my best advice for the person, the Yasumhu, is to make sure he observes fasting in that month. You see, that ayah is also an indication that there is something in Ramadan that we may not have all the knowledge of the benefits that is that one can get in Ramadan. You know, if Allah can say, Man shahida minkum, fal yasumuhu. Man shahida minkum, shaharo, fal yasumuhu. You know, it's like, ah, I will advise you the best thing for you is to observe it. Definitely, there are, there are benefits. There are so there is a huge benefit in that month for Allah to say, "Bali yesumhu." Let that let you should do it. So if we cannot encompass, we cannot you know be exhaustive in mentioning or listing the benefits in the month of Ramadan. So we can only just stop. We can only just make do with the little we know. But to encompass all the benefits, that is impossible. And that is why Allah said, uh, uh, amal, uh, the only Prophet of Allah said, amal Adam, Allah says to Prophet Muhammad, amal Adam, all the deeds of man, of the son of Adam, lahu, is for him. But Allah says, uh, I saw him lead. But when it comes to somebody who engages in fasting, Lee, you, you, you cannot reward that person. It is, I am the only one that knows the exact reward I have prepared for such a person. I am, I, I am the only one with the exclusive right, the exclusive authority to reward the person. That goes a long way to tell us that there are things about this Ramadan that we may not even shoot for till from the beginning of the world to the end of the world, we may not be able to encompass them. So let us let me stick to the uh uh, the slide Ramadan as a framework for holistic healing. Now, so let us 
come down to the topic of the day. As Muslims, we engage in the ancient religious tradition of fasting in the month of Ramadan. We do this only for the spiritual benefits, almost entirely ob oblivious of its physical benefits. We, we are just, most, the Muslims that we are, we are just concentrating. We have only our focus on the fact that Allah has decreed that whether we like it or not, when the month of yeah. Ramadan arrives, if uh, it's, uh, all things being equal, we yeah. are not sick. We are not, we don't have those reasons why we should be excluded, then we mm. must fast it. So we, we used to see Ramadan just as an activity that we will do it just to be close to Allah, to maintain our closeness to Allah and to, to gain more, uh, you know, uh, station, to get, gain a higher station in the stations to get it to Allah. However, recent scientific studies have established the fact that fasting has strong beneficial effects on the well-being of the people. So, just as other acts of ibadah, like salat, like hajj, like zakat, all these things, they, they have their spiritual benefits and they even have their worldly benefits to the physical the, the benefits we will share we will enjoy people will enjoy it from us and we will also you know enjoy it from others so one of these uh, this one i put down there i just copied it somewhere i didn't know i didn't i i i'm not aware that i didn't remove it the excess of food and drink causes many pains and diseases and fasting cleanses the body of mm -hmm. this harmful yes. waste so that yeah. is just one of the facts we have, in the, we have uh, uh, scientists have, have discovered in, 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 in the benefits of the month of Ramadan. So how does Ramadan, how does it, you know, come with providing healing? How does Ramadan, how can we marry the fact that Ramadan is here healing is here and there is, an, it, there is a connection between observing the month of Ramadan and you getting any form of healing, whether it is physiological, whether it is psychological, whether it is social, whether whatever uh, form or aspect, how do, we, how do we marry them? Then that leads me to, you know, expanding the components of Ramadan, deconstructing Ramadan. So Ramadan, as I said earlier, is a bundle of activities that are known as its components. So it is therefore pertinent to construct these components in order to explore their potential healing properties. Now, I was supposed to list them, but I'm gonna list them off head here. The components of Ramadan, the primary component of Ramadan is fasting. Hmm. The components of Ramadan is central Central function or central part of Ramadan is Salat. Another component of Ramadan is charity, act of charity. You know, people engage in charity. But if you compare the number of people that, you know, engage in the act of charity in the month of Ramadan with the number of people that do it outside the month of Ramadan, you will see a wide difference. Ha! So it is also central. The same thing is community, communal participation, communal living. You know, the white people have come to, you know, uh, to destroy our ways of living in the past. We used to be a, uh, a people and umar of communal living. We live together. The neighbor, the, 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 the people living, all the people in your street, in your area, you are like, one and the same. Mm. But now civilization has divided us. We are at a, at a time that we have our houses very, you know, condensed. Our population, we dense the area, we, our houses, 
we are almost choking ourselves with houses, but the, it is just the structures that are living together. The people living in the structure, we don't know wow. ourselves. <laughs> we live in the same in the same uh, compound where we have like four or five apartments, and it, 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 it beats one's imagination that we live in the same compound and we don't know ourselves. We don't know one another. So, but in the month of Ramadan, except if you are living with non-Muslims, even if you are living with non-Muslims, they, you know, appreciate the month of Ramadan. They somehow participate with us. I have seen Christians that join, that join us fasting. They eat sahur with us and they thaw and they fast. So this is another thing about, so about Ramadan, we have fasting, we have salads, we have act of charity, we have community living. Uh, what else? We have them. So I will start to list them one after the other. And I will try in the little minutes I have to quickly run through the healing implications, the, uh, the potential of these components to heal, you know, to provide healing properties. Now let us start from fasting. We know that fasting is uh, the real thing when it comes to Ramadan. Like all other months, it is only different from other months through the fact that you must engage in fasting. It is a matter of uh, must now. Unlike other months, if you can, if you cannot, you are free to. But this time around, all things being equal, you have to do it. So fasting involves total abstinence from food. We abstain from food. We abstain, we abstain from, uh, you know, drinking. We, abs we abstain from sexual activities from sunrise until sunset. So, and we, like, we all know it is it, it, the refrain, the restraint, the abstinence does not only stop in what we take, what we take maybe from the sun. Or, it is also an act of refrain from negative or anti-society, anti-social behaviors. Mm. It is a way Allah used, you know, to train us how to control our sensual organs. It is the month where we are very careful about what we watch, what we see, the kind of movies, the kind of sights we see, we look at. It is the month we are very careful with what we touch with our hands. It is the month we are very careful with what we say with our mouths. We are very careful with what we listen to. Like any other month, like, I mean, unlike any other month, Ramadan has, is exclusive, has that exclusive power. So as we are abstaining from the intake of food or anything, whether the thing is beneficial to the, to the body or harmful to the body, we must abstain from taking them. And the same way we must abstain from actions. We, mu we must abstain from deeds that are anti-social. Now, Allah says, wa in Surah Al-Baqarah 2 verse 184, it is continuation of the verse that I just read. Allah said, wa antesumu. You know, there are exemptions. There are, you know, some area where Allah relaxes the amru, the, of the obligatory area of Ramadan. And when after listening, after listing those parts, he now says, And if although you are on a long journey, you are exempted from fasting. You are somehow sick, you are exempted from fasting. You are doing this, you are doing that, you are exempted from fasting. But antesumu, but if you can try and fast. In that month, the, what Allah was saying there that, you know, we, we, we are aware that we will pay back. If I travel for, for one week now and I am unable to fast, I will pay it back maybe after, immediately after Ramadan or sometimes before the next Ramadan. But it has, mm -hmm. it definitely will be outside Ramadan. 
But Allah wants us to observe this fasting, this particular one in that month. So he says, well, answer so much, but to fast in that month, that Shah Ramadan, that Shah, that month, Khairul Lakum ah, is the best for you. In Kuntum Lamun, if you know, it is the best for you to fast if you only knew. So what Allah is saying there is that all these components, all these components, they work best. They function best. They function optimally when they are in sync, when they are in action simultaneously. They, 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 they yield optimal results when they are, you know, observed in that month, not outside the month, not even immediately after the month, in that month. So Allah said, it is better for you that ye fast if ye only, you know, if only you knew. So fasting, aside the spiritual uh, yes yes i don't know i just have to what do we do now uh let me leave it to you what do you, what's what's your plan with the prayer are you the one that will lead uh, okay I, 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 I already told somebody to go lead them so afterwards i'll go and just start like the lecture i'm supposed to take them through okay so, so you, you can just quickly conclude that uh, okay. i know it's okay. i know you can't rush it but just try your best <laughs> oh, no problem so aside the fact that uh ramadan uh has a huge spiritual benefit science has now discovered it is not that it is a new thing but we are now just waking up to the fact that so Ramadan has so many uh, physical, mental, you know, and uh, sure. psychological, social benefits. But here, what, what are the healing properties of fasting? We have the, the side of the metabolic health, which has to do with, you know, uh, the metabolism, you know, Outside Ramadan, people engage in fasting for weight loss. Yeah. So the only thing they get there is the weight loss. They have no spiritual reward. They have no, no, no. ladder to climb. No, no. No. Again, in metabolism, it reduced, it reduced the risk of chronic diseases like diabetes. It reduces obesity. It even helps in detoxifying the body, detoxification of the body, the leftovers, you know, the unnecessary fats in the system. So through Ramadan, through fasting, the, you know, the cells in the body, they begin to, you know, they, they get more active and they begin to eat up all the, you know, the fats that are not useful to the body because you have staffed them. Mm. That's about metabolic health. Then we have the mental well-being. Ramadan fasting also helps in, you know, in, in, in normalizing the me mental well-being, because through Ramadan you will be able to control your gaze, what you look at. Through Ramadan you will be able to control what you listen to, what you say, and through all these things you get to have the power to regulate your emotions. You have the power of self-awareness. You have the power of focus. And, you know, the mind-body connection through Ramadan, it, it, they are at, at the optimum. So this is another, you know, benefit or the healing uh, implication of fasting in the month of Ramadan. We also have the physiological advantage. And that is where the hormone levels the insulin sensitivity, the cardiovascular area of the system is touched by Ramadan. Mm. You, you don't get disturbed by in the heart. You feel good. You, you feel uh, like light. You know, sometimes you feel heavier. You may be out of eating too much. 
But during Ramadan, even if you eat like no tomorrow in the night, in the day you will lose all those energy because you'll be engaged in this and that and you'll not be able to refill it. So you just make do with the one you have, you know, loaded in the night. Mm -hmm. So it's potential mm -hmm. application for holistic healing is that ob observing fasting in the month of Ramadan can be utilized as a tool for various physical and mental benefits, ranging from metabolic health. We, as we treat people, we can even introduce fasting to some people, like maybe people who are suffering from obesity uh, or suffering from, you know, uh, uh, lipid blood lipid profiles, uh, mm -hmm. chronic diseases like diabetes, you know, it would reduce your intake of sugar. So fasting, we can, uh, uh, you know, accompany the drugs we administer to people, mm -hmm. and we also tell them to observe fasting. So it help, It also helps in mental well-being improvement and comprehensive wellness. So the second one, of the second of the composition of Ramadan is prayer. And prayer is the, a direct spiritual interaction between man and his rock. It is a central component Yeah. No. No. Uh, I think I need to share the recording for you again. Please unmute, I will share the presentation so that we can. Yes, go ahead. Back. Yeah, go ahead. Please. Now, the second one is prayer. Yeah. And uh, like I was saying, it is like a sine qua non, something without which you cannot fast in the month of Ramadan if you are not a true believer. And that is why Allah says, Yeah, you are living in Amen. Allah did not say, Yeah, are you a nurse? He says, Yeah, are you a ladina? And the Holy Prophet says, La farko bainal Muslim, bainal mumin wal kafir, illa bi salat. The only difference between a Muslim, a mumin, and a non believer, a believer and a non believer is salat. So that makes prayer, salat, a central function, a central parts or characteristics of Ramadan. So um, prayer in the month of Ramadan is increased. Apart from the fact that more people, you know, in the month of Ramadan, more Muslims engage in, uh, you know, in, the, in Salat, that's a side. It, these people also, you know, in addition to them coming to the mosque to pray, they also perform extra salat in the form of taraweeh and in the form yeah. of qiyamun layl. Yeah. So engaging in taraweeh, engaging in qiyamun layl, engaging in this additional prayers that Muslim observe in the month of Ramadan has its own implication. So what are the implications? Allah says, observe salat. In the salat, I want to, you know, translate al fasha ibuna here as something that is socially that will affect the society. And I would translate al munkar as something negative that is going to affect you as an individual. So when you observe salat, Tenia and El Fashai. Salat will protect the society, the community, the group that you belong to, the people, your, the neighborhood. It will protect the neighborhood from being harmed. Al Fashai, you, you, Salat will prevent, Salat will take care of things. The one you will commit against a fellow human being like you. 
when Salat forbids you from, you know, uh, 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 cheating on the next person, when Salat forbids you or stops you or restrains you from eating what is not yours, taking what is not yours, uh, uh, backbiting, uh, committing zina with another person's wife or daughter, and other, you know, social vices. So I would give al-fasha in that meaning because what is al-fasha is what is something you commit mm -hmm. against another person. Why, while al-munkar is something you commit against yourself. Something you know that is not okay, but, at the end, but you still engage in it. Like they say, smokers are liable to die young. And then you still see people rushing to get cigarettes, to get the sticks, to, to get the pack, to, to smoke every now and then. But in the month of Ramadan, you abstain from this. When you observe Salat, Salat restrains you from engaging in something that will be harmful to yourself, al munkar and something that will be harmful to the society, Al-Fasha. Now, in the month of Ramadan, you now add to the numbers of Salat you observe. After Salat, Subway, Zora, Asri, Maghreb, Shai, you still observe Tarawih. In some mosques, 20, 20 something rakats. In some mosques, 11 rakats. You know, add it to the Kiyamu line. In some areas here in Nigeria, you will see people, uh, the Nafila for tonight, Raka Meta, Salam Omeni. You know, they announce the number of, of Nawafil that you will observe. Sometimes they will say, uh, uh, the the nafla for tonight is uh, uh, twenty rakats with ten yeah. salamas. After that, you recite. You know, all these things won't go just like that. They will perform the function of al anahyu and al fashahi and nahyu and al monkari. This thing, the ones in the day, will prevent you from engaging in al fasha iwal munkar in the day, during the day. And the one you do, the Qiyam al will also prevent you from engaging in them even in the dark hour of the night. That is prayer. Now, we should have the, what are the benefits of prayer? One is spirituality and healing. There is an established relationship between spirituality that is engendered by salat and healing. So we see when you pray time to time, prayer nurtures inner peace. Mm, mm, when you pray, mm, you yeah. feel a kind of you know, inner peace, some peace in your heart that you will, you will be wondering, where am I getting all this from? I am owing this person, yet I am relaxed. I, am, I feel relaxed. I feel that Allah will do it. That is what Salat does. And Munkar, it, it restrains you from things that will hurt you, whether physical, whether emotional, whether psychological. You feel sense of hope and meaning. You feel connection to divine being. When you observe your Salat, it is only people who do this that will, you know, will, that can relate to all these things. So you feel that, you feel it, it helps you promote self-belief and then the mental and emotional well-being aspect of it too will also be there. That is the spirituality and healing. The part, the second mm. part is the psychological well-being. You know, the fact that, that we increase prayer in Ramadan is instrumental to psychological well-being because we are, as we increase in, you know, creating time for Allah to pray so, for yeah, Him, we yeah. feel mm. some increased mindfulness. We feel some it may learn. Allah be zikrillahi that my in So, yeah. and every time we prepare salat, we go to we go to salat. It is zikr because we are not there to talk to anybody but Allah. And after salat, we yeah. still hold, hold our our rosary to chant yeah. the name of Allah to feel this. Allah will not say something and that thing will not come to pass. Allah says be zikrillahi. That's my inbox. So when you finish your salat and by the fan the fans of Baila Rubbi Kafurga, when you finish and you hold your tespa and you start reciting, chanting the name of Allah, 
al itminan this tranquility this inner peace will automatically descend on you and people will be wondering ah kilo jayo how do you feel this young how do you feel this you know bright and shining it is the power of salat yeah, so yeah. that is the psychological area of salat and that is how and in that area when we when when we see somebody going through uh you know uh sickness whether it is psychological whether it is physiological or whatever it is we can also uh advise the person to you know Centrate. observe his season as well in this mm -hmm. he will feel the healness he will feel the impact of that salat and it will be healed he will be healed mm -hmm. then the third one is charity that is in form of zakat and in form of sadaqa you know uh it, it's just because of time i have some stories about this charity and a very yeah, wonderful one uh, a very <laughs> a very beautiful one but i just have to make do with time i have less than okay. uh, three minutes now and, and i hope you'll pardon me so i'll go through everything so okay, it is another you. fundamental <laughs> of the holy month of ramadan ramadan provides the period of high harvest of rewards for good deeds when you good man ja'a bil hasana falahu ashru amsaliha whoever does a good deed allah says lahu ashru amsaliha i will give the person tenfold in return that is outside ramadan in the month of ramadan allah says fasomu li wa ana ajzi bi Fasting Allah. is for me, Anna Ajzi. Forget the tenfold that I have mentioned earlier. This time around, you cannot know. You cannot Estimated. spend your days and nights to think about how big, how huge the reward will be. You cannot know it. So, fasting in the month of Ramadan gives us an opportunity of huge rewards, huge harvest for good deeds. Huge harvest for rewards for good deeds, and believers are aware of this bazaar, and they are usually mm. given to engaging more in charitable activities during the month. Yeah. The month, the Aisha radiallahu anha, when he was describing the Holy Prophet yeah, Muhammad, yeah. he says, she said, Muhammad engages in charity more in the month of Ramadan than any other month. Yeah. The, these, you know, they are just like a bazaar. This is the time we have to. So, what is the implication? What is the implication of, of uh, engaging in, in charity? First, when you go through the ayah, I don't want to go through it because of time. You get returns that you cannot quantify, that you cannot yeah. even uh, fathom. Yeah. So that leads me to the story of one man. I read it in a book. That book uh, was uh, authored by Sheikh Musliuddin Kalejai. Okay, so yeah. I, in that book, he talked about a real life, uh, you know, occurrence about a one's uh, American one of uh, the richest man in the world during the time. The Rockefellers, no, no, so the, yeah, JD Rockefeller. You know, at the age of 52, he was diagnosed that uh, he had cancer. And when he went for treatment, they say he would not live to witness his 53rd birthday, that he had less than six months to live. Mm. And he, he, at that time, he was the richest man in the world, just no. like we have. What's the name of this guy? Uh, Elon Musk. No, no, no. Just no, like no. we have, we have Elon Musk today. That was J.D. Rockefeller then. So he sat down and said, "Okay, I have all the money in the world, and I'm still, I, I'm still not going to live for another year. So what am I doing with all this money?" And he started, you know giving the money to charity organizations in amount he gave all, he gave out all the money he had and you know what the fact that 
the happiness he derived from you know making yeah. people happy here and there. He, 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 when he was you know healthy, he, he he wasn't spending that much, so he had he didn't have the privilege to know the kind of happiness one can derive from, from you know yeah. engaging in charity. When he did this, yeah. you see, miraculously, he became healed Lord of the God. cancer. Yeah. He cleared up. He went so he went back to the doctor, and they were like, "What happened? What did you do?" He could <laughs> not. It's not that he went to take a go. He didn't take half. He had resigned to fate. No. But from nowhere, without a doctor around, the, the sickness cleared up. The it problems did. went away. And he lived until he was uh, 92. He didn't die. He, spent, Lord, he, he lived for another 40 years at the ripe age of 42. So this is the power of charity. And the implication is, I'll just leave it there. Number one is, uh, uh, okay, let me come down. I think, uh, let me just go to the conclusion. You, we have okay. everything here. It's just that I have them here. It's just PowerPoint. I'm just, it's just the little, little point that I'm leaving there. Maybe I will have to forward a full, you know, write up later to sure. uh, to you on the thing. But like we sure. like we can see here, we have uh, the, the 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 benefits of charity building re resilience and empathy, just like it happened to J D Rockefeller, somebody that has been medically written off. So, out because of the empathy. He felt with others because of the, wow. you know, the fact that he shared from, you know, the bottom of his heart. He gained resilience, and through resilience, he came back to his, his life. So, hmm. physical and psychological effects is also one of the gains we can, you know, get in uh, engaging in charity. Allow me to go quickly go to the social area. Uh, okay. the community yes it is very important that we talk about the community because the social support or community part of uh, uh, Ramadan. The, of Ramadan you see we cannot overemphasize this fact in the mosque now we have children, kids the, mm. the ones we, we have seen for Moms, they are all here in the mosque. And you feel when we were young, you can imagine happiness. the kind of happiness we feel going to the mosque. Even though we are not there to pray, we are there to just be tapping ourselves, to be pinching ourselves while we are on salat. See the happiness. No, no. We would not want to go home. No. Where do we get that communal life again, if not in the month of Ramadan? No. It has always, it has almost. Uh, been eradicated completely. It is something that is almost in extinct. Mm. But with the help of Ramadan, we mm. have been reminded, we have been, you know, awakened to the fact that this is the true way to live a fulfilled life, a fulfilling life. Without which, it will just be one, uh, every man for himself, which is not the design of Allah. No. We are here to be our brother's keeper. We are here to, 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 to involve in our brother's lives. You are not here to live for yourself. We are, I am here to live for you. You are here to live for me. But, but what we have now is we all are living for ourselves. Mm. Except in the month of Ramadan, that is when we imagine what we do to ourselves. We, you have 100 naira in your pocket. You bought two oranges with that 100 naira. You nobody will be begging you to give out one orange, you will just voluntarily yeah, yeah, give yeah. out. <laughs> Imagine that Th this is the month when you your parents will not call you to buy them bomb bitter, they will not call you to buy them clothes. You just out of nowhere, you just go to the market, buy bomb bitter for your mother in law, your father in law, your own father, your own brother. Everybody, you just do this. Thing. Imagine we do these things, we extend this attitude, this social, this communal life, imagine we extend it beyond Ramadan. Mm. 
our lives will not be like this. Yeah. They will all not live a happy life. I think yeah. I should stop here, inshallah. I exactly. once again yeah. I would love to say thank you very much. And I would be uh I would not be no matter how in a hurry I am, I must say Jazakumullah to you for this opportunity. Mm -hmm. And uh, I must also recognize the effort of Sheikh Ismail Bakari for linking, yeah. you know, even though you said yeah. you are part of the, you know, instru instrument that uh, I would say <laughs> I am very happy yeah. to be part of this. And I yeah. hope and I look forward to being part of this again, but not this time. Yeah. Maybe Inshallah, the, we'll, the, we'll link up uh, with you. Uh, maybe in the uh, evening. I'll, yes, yes. Uh, I will not be under pressure. I want to answer yeah, this. We'll I want to answer, answer that. Yeah. Uh, so, Inshallah. So, is that um, most later? probably, yeah. there are other things you yeah. would like to share with us next time. Maybe. Uh, it's possible there are other uh, topics that we might want you to share with us next time. There are some other things that we'll think we'll also engage you in, Inshallah. I believe this is just the beginning of our relationship. And uh, we would like to have you more and more and also to join us. Sure. <laughs> Inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you very much, Sheikh. We are very grateful. And uh, this is uh, beautiful. And I wouldn't want to just delay you, except if we have someone that have a question, they can really ask, please. Um, I, can, I can still I can still like around for a question or two. OK. Um, well, now there are no questions. I want to ask a question. I don't know if you permit me. Uh, it's regarding please, solar. Please go ahead, sir. Okay. Okay. So what do you think? Um, uh, at the part where you say it, it reduces the fashai and then the munkar. So why is it that still, you know, uh, what is that thing that some people when they finish prayer, they still go back. So why uh, is that solar not, uh, you know, in Ramadan, they, they pray a lot. So in between, they don't have time to, uh, to engage in it. But um, so, what is that thing that's okay? Outside Salah, what is that thing that's pushing them out of Salah? They still go by me, like smoking and all that. So, is there a way you can explain why that is? Uh, you see, that word, Teneha. It is not, it is like, how do I put it? It is a modori. It is mm. not a nahayu. It is not, uh, and uh, how do I put it? A, a preventing <laughs> no, word. No, no, I understand. So gradually. It is just <laughs> one of the characteristics of mm. No, no, no. And, you, no. you know, there is the verse in the tail end of the Quran where Allah says, Wailun lil musallina. Al ladina. Hum and sola tihim. So if you compare this verse with teniha and al fashai, it means that you can still observe solat. And after solat, sahaita. You just let everything about solat. Forget Allah. No. I hope that word. I, yeah, uh, very beautiful. Beautiful. No? Thank, you <laughs> exactly. okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Now, I would like to release you and we say a big Zakum uh, Usually, our practice, we have uh, a, a certificate of appreciation, which I'm going to share with you a show of appreciation okay. uh, that's Thank for you. honoring our request. So, I'll do that uh, afterwards and send to you, inshallah. And thank you so much for coming and I want to thank everyone. So inshallah, when I put up this, uh, I'll be sharing the recording with you. So I'll just uh, be closing this remark now. So thank Allah, my behalf. Inshallah, la ilaha illa anta astabika wa tu ilayh. Subhanahu wa rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifun. As-salamu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum.